If you ever get caught in a cyclone, lie low to the ground and hold on to the nearest micro jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. If you're just starting out in woodworking, you will soon realize that sawdust gets everywhere and a broom alone is probably not enough of a solution. Not only is having a system in place to deal with dust important for the air quality of your shop and what you're breathing, but I actually feel more productive in a clean shop without sawdust all over everything. Very large workshops will have large stationary dust extractors with custom duct work running to each power tool. This is probably the best way to keep your shop and air clean. There are two big reasons a system like that might not be a solution for your shop. First of all, it's expensive. You can spend thousands of dollars installing and outfitting a complete dust extraction system. Second, you really need a dedicated shop space and stationary tools. If you work in a small garage like I do, having tools that are mobile is a necessity. I move around my table saw and router table all the time. And of course, this is even more of an issue for those of you who unfortunately have to share space with a car. For hobbyists and weekend builders, there is another more affordable solution. For years, the heart of my dust collection system has been this 16 gallon shop vac. If you do nothing else about dust collection, I at least recommend buying a shop vac. It will make woodworking a much more pleasant experience. If your tools are mobile and the weather is agreeable, roll them outside. I actually prefer using my tools outside. It's nice working in the fresh air and cleanup is easy. Easier. All power tools have some sort of dust extraction port and it's a simple matter to attach a vacuum hose. You'll be surprised how much sawdust a shop vac removes. Plus a shop vac is great for cleaning up all over the shop. And you can use it for lots of other handy purposes such as cleaning the interior of your car or you can switch the hose around and it becomes a blower. Since I don't have a lot of floor space in my shop, I pretty much leave the shop vac sitting out here in the driveway all year long. Yeah, it gets rained on occasionally, but it's been working fine for almost 15 years now. A few years ago, I added one of these mini cyclones to my shop vac. This is all that's left of my first cyclone. Eventually the lid and the seals deteriorated, so I just replaced it with this one. The way a cyclone works is simple. You hook it up to your shop vac like this and all of the dust is collected in this bucket rather than in the shop vac. The hose connects to the vacuum which sucks all of the air through this unit. Then whatever sawdust you vacuum up gets sucked in this way, spins around in the cyclone and 99% of that sawdust drops into the bucket instead of the shop vac. There's a lot of good reasons to collect the sawdust before it goes into the shop vac. The most important part of a shop vac is its filter which collects the dust particles and lets the clean air blow out. These filters get clogged very quickly under normal use which reduces the vacuum's suction. By adding this stage before the vacuum, this filter stays cleaner and the vacuum retains its power. Another benefit is being able to see how much sawdust is collected in this bucket and empty it before it gets full. When I was using just the shop vac, it was amazing how often I would experience no suction power only to realize that the shop vac was completely filled with sawdust burying the filter. I'm really surprised I never burned the motor out. The biggest problem to using a system like this is that it can be difficult to maneuver around. The bucket to my old cyclone actually bolted to the side of my shop vac and that was pretty awkward. This new one came with this roll around base that the bucket just drops into but since it's not attached to the shop vac it's really impossible to move them around. It did come with this strap to kind of lash the two together and it was basically useless. And of course another problem with my setup is this huge 16 gallon shop vac. Since I'm not collecting dust in it, it's just a lot of wasted space. And to be honest, this really is showing some signs of age. So I decided to upgrade to a much smaller unit. This is just a four gallon vac, but it still has the same five horsepower as my old shop vac. I'm gonna combine it with the new Cyclone and make the whole unit mobile.
even though I'm just gonna be making a no frills basic box of a cart, I still took the time to make some plans for myself. I find that having plans saves me a lot of time in the shop knowing that all of the dimensions have been pre-planned and all I need to do is cut the lumber and piece it together. I'll assemble this with glue and screws. I don't have one piece big enough for the bottom, so I'll hobble together three little pieces. I can use these casters that came with the cyclone. I think I'll add some blocks to keep this from sliding back and forth. Plus, I want to remove this handle. Whenever I need to change the filter for the vacuum, I'll need to remove this cross brace. Depending on the diameter of your hose, you may need to get an adapter to fit into here. The hose from my old shop back fits fine. Wow, this is so much easier to roll around. I may actually start bringing it in from the rain sometimes. This week's episode is brought to you in part by Audible.com, the world's leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet. The book I listened to in the shop this month and would like to recommend is The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. It's a psychological thriller about a kidnapper who tattoos all of his victims with elaborate butterflies. If you enjoyed Silence of the Lambs, you'll probably like this one, but there's a part of the story that I just had to share with you because the kidnapper eventually preserves his victims in resin. You know who I'm thinking of? <laughs> yep, my friend Peter Brown here on YouTube who pretty much puts everything in resin. You can download The Butterfly Garden or any other book free and get a free 30-day trial of Audible by going to audible.com slash woodworking. Thanks again to Audible for helping to make this episode possible. And as always, leave a comment if you have any book recommendations. I hope this video has been helpful for getting you started dealing with sawdust. At some point, you may want to get much more elaborate and set up a dedicated dust extraction system. But if you aren't working in the shop every day, a system with a shop vac will do a great job without costing you a fortune. I'll include my simple plans for this cart down in the description. Of course, you'll need to modify them based on the size and shape of your components. Most importantly, I'd like to know if you have any more affordable tips for sawdust management. I think that your tips would be real valuable to others too. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next week.